guys. Welcome to the, the Black, Black Sheep. Sheep podcast. Wow. First episode. First episode. Woo. I think we said first episode last time as well, but this is the real first episode. This is the actual first. E- oh my God. Do we have to sit here and talk for like an hour? That's correct. That's what that means? That's what that means. Wow. That's my favorite thing to do. Talk about <laughs> talk about myself. Okay, I'm just kidding. first of all, what's happening with your drawers over there? I okay, just saw yeah, that. Yeah, that is the problem that's been happening. Oh my god, if you guys can see my her makeup drawers, drawers are like what the f- fucked. Like it's just uh, yeah, I need to get new ones. There's metal rails like shooting out of the dresser right yeah. now. Yeah, what's happening? There's drawers that have completely collapsed. It's just oh my god, I cannot believe I haven't <laughs> seen that before. Anyways. <laughs> As you guys saw by the title, today we're going to be talking about dreams. dreams. Um, Which is a very interesting topic super to me, I feel like, and also to a lot of people. I no, think. yeah. So I feel like that's this is a good uh, starter episode if you are joining us. <clears throat> I'd just like to say you, if you are joining us in the audio version, this is going to come out on a Saturday, but the video version is going to come out the following Friday. So if you're watching some video, hey, what's up? But thank you for listening in audio if you are. Anyways, um... Yeah, today we're going to be talking about dreams, and we've done a little experiment where we <laughs> done a little experiment <laughs> where we um, dream, where we dream, <laughs> where we recorded uh, down our dreams for like about a week or so, and we've written them down, and then we've written down their meanings about you know whatever you know people believe <laughs> that dreams have meanings. Uh, so that's what we've done today, but we'll get into that a little bit later. What's that? Can you open that? <laughs> She's asking me to open her Red Bull, guys. <coughs> Are you all right, man? I am not okay. Um, by the way... Maybe you should drink some water. <coughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Just hurry up and open oh, it, wait, wait, let me Let me do this <laughs> in the microphone. I bet oh. that sounded crisp. Yes, very crisp. <laughs> Why... Does like steam come out of Red Bulls when you open them? Don't I don't know. Really? I think it's like the pressure that it's inside. Oh. Because like, look, watch this. You ready for this? Only people watching the video will probably see this. Did you see? I didn't see shit. You didn't see anything? No. <clears throat> oh, whoa. Did you see it? You can do that too. You just have to like, there just has to be like pressure in your mouth or something. And like the heat with the cold air mixes in your mouth and creates steam. You didn't know that? I did not know that. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but... Probably not. Yeah, you probably can't. But that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, I am a little bit sick, <clears throat> and I, like, randomly have coughing attacks, so I need to, like, be sipping on something so my throat doesn't get dry, so just disclaimer. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Probably should be watered. My brother's just a... forcing me to record today. I'm forcing her, guys. <laughs> In her own podcast, I'm forcing her. <clears throat> um anyways so i just want to talk about you know how's life right now before we get into anything else okay so how you how you doing melissa estrella um, actually life you is... know her name is melissa lugo estrella okay by the way yeah just put out my social anyone... security number address all that too if you want license plate number <laughs> if license. anyone doesn't know that her name is melissa lugo estrella <clears throat> you can't just you can't just use estrella without you have two last names you're not a white person Okay, first of all, white people have two last names sometimes. But they don't also. use them. No, they but don't. Usually, they don't. Yeah, they don't use them. Mexicans have a have two last names. Yeah, we have hyphenated. Yeah, because we take name. we take our mom's last name as well as our our father's. Yeah, and last name. our dad's last name comes first because he's the man. He's the man. That's how it is in the world. <laughs> Men come first. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, yeah, your name is Melissa Lewis. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for saying that. Um, but life is good. I'm sweating um, now. Yeah, you're sweating? I'm actually sweating this time. Yeah. Jeez. I never sweat, And guys. he never sweats. I'm always sweating. She's always she's always like, every time we're doing something, <laughs> we're hanging up this like, curtain behind us, and then she was like, are you sweating? So she just asked me just randomly, are you sweating? Because she Cause sweats I so much. Because I get like, hot internally. Like, when something's stressing me out or I have, like, anxiety about something, like, I get hot and then I start sweating. I'm, I'm sweating right now because I think I'm nervous. I don't know. Yeah, why. you're nervous. It's okay to be nervous, you know? I know. I'm not nervous. I was just kidding. <laughs> it was a joke. Okay. Um, yeah, but life is good. I'm life. getting over a cold. Um, also, I mean, I don't know when this episode's going to come out, 
mm-hmm. but I just got a puppy. Um, so she's, sh- oh, if she comes in here, we'll show her. Yeah, I don't know what she's doing right now. She does her own thing, but um, <laughs> she's super cute, and it's been great so far. I've had her for like a week, um, and yeah, it's been pretty good, you know? Yeah. How about you? That's cool. She's very cute. Mm-hmm. She's very playful as well. I'm very playful. <laughs> Do you want to tell her name or are you not? Yeah, I mean, her name is Harley, Harley, by the way. Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson, that's her full name. Harley <laughs> Davidson, Estrella. Lugo Estrella. Lugo Estrella. There you go. <laughs> um what's going on uh right now i'm having some car issues right because uh you know broke boys have car issues that's what happens when you're broke you get car problems broke boy problems anyways <laughs> you get car problems that you can't pay for you get car problems that you can't pay for <laughs> and, then, and then you need money and then you have no money after that anyway mm-hmm. <laughs> but i did fix my car right now it just needed a, a part that was broken and it was kind of expensive <clears throat> so i had to fix that and it's fixed right now uh the only thing right now is that i need to change a tire because one of the tires popped so it's just like one thing after the other mm-hmm. just keeps coming cars are expensive mm-hmm. and Very. when you're and when you're broke you, you, a car is almost not affordable they're like a lifetime expense Mm-hmm. kind of yeah or everyone, a lifetime investment everyone needs a car yeah everyone has a car so it's just but it's, they are expensive yeah anyways um yeah what else <clears throat> filming any videos lately oh you're gonna sell your car though oh yeah i'm gonna sell my car if anyone wants to buy it yeah if you want to buy it hit me up i might i might have sold it by, by the, the time, time he sells it it'll be all fixed though it's not gonna be no yeah messed it's up. it's already fixed right now it just has a couple of things that i need to replace um but it's a nice car. Mm-hmm. It's a little, just a little old, but it's a nice car. It's a Stang. It's a Stang. It's a manual, uh, yeah, 4.0 liter of engine. <laughs> it's a V6. I don't want to say that, but it's a V6. Why don't you want to say that? Because I'm going to get crap from the V8s. Oh, oh. Ooh, V8 versus the V6. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about cars. The so. V8 is always, they're just faster, way faster. Oh, is there a V9? V10? There's a V12. Oh, there's, there's a, a V10 V12. and a V12, but those are like Lamborghinis. Oh. But they're not, they don't be muscle cars. Okay. Or, anyway. <laughs> this is not a, a podcast about cars. Yeah, this is not a car uh, community. <clears throat> so you said uh, you're getting over a cold. I'm also, I think we both have, well, are you getting over a cold or do you have allergies right now? I also have allergies, but I think right now I'm getting over a cold because I just, my throat is just dry and it just i have to cough a lot i have coughing attacks i don't have coughing when i get <clears throat> um allergies allergies i usually just like when my throat is like how you have it like you said like there's Itchy. like feels like something is like stuck in your throat and you just want to swallow constantly mm-hmm. i get that but i don't i don't have to cough so yeah so i'm definitely sick right now i also have allergies if my voice sounds weird <clears throat> So <laughs> <laughs> that was a delightful sound. Yeah, Hope so, you guys enjoyed that one. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think it's because of just summertime is mm-hmm. here. Pollen. Summertime allergies. Love it. Love it. A lot of Claritin in the system. Mm-hmm. Wait, but you didn't used to get uh, yeah I did allergies. I don't know what that is. I think it's like when you get, I just got older. And yeah, like, that happened to me. Really? So good luck. Yeah, I used to like. I was so like. You know, people in school, they would always have, like, the little forms you have to fill out if you have allergies to things. And I would oh. always click none. Yeah, and right. And I was, like, super so proud easy. of it. I was oh. super proud of it. I was just <laughs> like, I don't have any allergies. No peanut allergies. Yeah. You are proud and of that? Then, yeah. And then yeah. I got older and then, like, you know, I have, like, kind of, so, like, my skin is allergic to certain, like, soaps and, like, oh. it just, yeah. Getting old just... It sucks. It sucks getting mm-hmm. old. Every, it's just so, like... That paradox is so weird because it's like every little kid wants to be old. And then when you get old, every old person just wants to be young again. Mm -hmm. They just don't know. Yeah. But like, I don't want to be a kid. I I want to be like. I wish I was 17. That's your ideal age? I'm not. I might be 17. Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) You wish you were 17. No, I don't know. (laughs) You guys don't know how old I am, so I'm not going to say that. I wish, I think the ideal age for me, 19. 19? How old are you now? I like being 19. I'm 23. 
Jeez. Turning 24 tomorrow. Happy birthday. Thanks. I didn't know that. Yep. I'm also turning 24 the next day and the next day and the next day. Oh. Yeah. I'm stuck at 24. So you said 19. <laughs> Why would you want to be 19 forever? Um, I think 19 is a good age. It's like after you're 18, so you have a little bit more like... Oh, you can get into places. Yeah. Yeah, I guess But you're true. also not like 20. Like you're not in the 20s yet. So it's just like... I, I, I don't know. I just like 19. I like 17 because you have a car and you can drive anywhere you want. There's a little bit more freedom. You can turn 16, you can have a license. Uh-huh. And then 17 is kind of like in between 16 and 18. <clears throat> but you can't really do much. S- did you know that 17 18? is between 16 and 18? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that's what I'm saying. Because, like, I would do a lot of illegal <laughs> shit when I was 17. And so that was kind of like, I-, I can just get away with it. I'm a minor. If I break into a place, like, for YouTube videos and stuff like that I was doing at the time, mm. I was like, I'm 17. Right, I don't you can nothing. get away with a lot more things. That's true. That's why I think 17 is cool. But, like, how you said, then you can get into, like, a club or something mm-hmm. if you wanted to do something like that. Also, 21. I like 21. You're past that, though. Yeah. But, like, 19... 19- or 21. I would choose either or of those to be for the rest of my life. Mm. But who knows? You not, you haven't even got to 30 yet. What if 30 is 30 and thriving? I'm still going to want to be 19 <laughs> when I'm 30. No, I, you know what I was thinking about the other day? Mm. I was thinking about how, like, let's just say, like, we lived a thousand years, right? The typical lifetime was a thousand years. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Then you're like your parents and anyone that was older than you would kind of just become your friends, right? Because my dad is, what, like 20 years older than me? Mm-hmm. 20, 20, 25 years oh, older right. than it you. It wouldn't be like that much So, like, difference. he would be 1,000 years old, and I would be 975 years old. <laughs> so, it's like that difference just becomes smaller and smaller as you get older. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, then you just be your friend now. It's like you can't, you can't be like, listen to me because I know so much more than you. It's like we've lived almost basically the same amount yeah. of time. That's a long time to live. I would not want to live 1,000 years. I would. That's- what do you mean? 1,000 years, that's too much. Dude, do you know how many experiences you can have? Well, yeah, but like... You'd be so smart. I bet you would be really smart. Or are you still going to be like young and like Um, fit? Like a vampire. Vampires live so long and they're Uh. still young. I think that's how it would be. Because obviously if you live 1,000 years old, you have to like... Like 500 would be middle age, right? Oh, okay. So 500 would be like 50 years old. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. So... That would be sick. 200 years, and you'd be, like, still, like, in your 20s, yeah. basically. Okay, that, okay, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Probably have a lot of partners. Because then, that imagine be being awesome. with somebody for a thousand years. I don't think anyone would do that. No, fuck that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was going to say that would be nice. Imagine if being with <laughs> someone for a thousand years, you guys would just be. <clears throat> no, but if, you'd if probably I get lived tired. a thousand years, yeah, I would, like experience with different people like a lot of different relationships because i feel like a, like re- having relationships in life is like a huge part of life i feel growing like. up yeah yeah because you learn so much from the person that like you're with whether it's a good experience or a bad experience mm-hmm. like it's always a learning experience i always see them that way so it's hard to see it that way sometimes though like i wouldn't want to live my whole 1000 years like single see right would you no 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 not single but like you wouldn't want a one partner i don't know i feel like you are that way though i feel like i might be that my brother is very much of a like relationship person i feel like i am like you don't enjoy no i don't enjoy being single nope i don't (laughs) i don't enjoy like like people that are are like oh hot girl summer i'm single summertime i'm gonna go like I don't. I don't mean to say like you girls do this. I mean guys as well. Like guys do it as Hot well. Hot guy summer. Hot guy summer. I'm single. I'm gonna go like fuck a bunch of girls. Yeah. Like, like no. You don't enjoy that. Part. I don't enjoy that. Like having a one night stand is like the worst thing ever <laughs> for me. <laughs> oh. Or you don't enjoy like dating. I feel like. No, not really. Yeah. I'm fucking weird. Okay. Yeah. I know everybody like all these just... girls want to comment on my pictures and then, like date me. And I'm like leave me alone. <laughs> So you want to be, so you want to be alone, or you don't want to be alone. I. I wish I could find someone that is just like me, but it's impossible. You think you could be in a relationship with yourself? I yeah, if I could, I would. <laughs> you think you're in the most perfect partner? Yeah, I think so. 
there's no i see zero <laughs> flaws in myself okay well, anyways <laughs> oh you know what i wanted to talk about i wanted to talk about uh your kidney stones how are your oh, kidney stones going <laughs> i actually never talked about this on my channel so we talk about it here sure let's do it okay start from the so, beginning Oh, God, a whole last story? Okay, yeah, how let's long do have it. we been going for? 15, Look, 16 minutes? Still got so much time. <clears throat> so, basically, I have now experienced the worst pain that a human being can experience. Or so is said. In my early 20s. Um, so, when was it? I don't even know how long ago now. Months? Two months? So, here, I have, I'm very right, bad with I have time. the exact date written down. Okay. Yep. My sister got kidney stones today. <laughs> no, it's because I had a <laughs> I had a call out work and I write my work hours down. Oh right, right. Let's see. So I said <coughs> six. Should I say the date? <clears throat> yeah, why not? Okay, so it was on June fourth, two thousand twenty-one. Mm. Took Melissa to ER. So that was that's yeah, a month ago, almost a month yeah. and a half. So basically, I had woken up kind of like at four in the morning and i started like feeling some sort of like cramping but i was also on my period at the time so i just thought like oh well, it's like period cramps so i was gonna take some like ibuprofen or something but i was like no it should be fine like it'll go away if i go back to sleep so i fell back asleep and then i woke up at like eight in the morning to like the most excruciating pain and i just I kind of still thought that it was cramps because I was kind of half asleep, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, I need to like take some ibuprofen now. So I got up and I could barely like get out of bed. And I was like, oh my God, my cramps are like really bad right now. <laughs> so I went to the kitchen and I took some ibuprofen. And then I went to go lay back down and I was just kind of like waiting for them to like kick in, you know? And right, so they what just time was never this? did. It was like eight in the morning. Eight in the morning, okay. <clears throat> And then I started feeling it more so like on my right side, like lower abdomen, right side, kind of like towards like my back also. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this is not cramps. Like this is something else. So I started automatically thinking like, oh, it's my appendix or something like, I don't know. And then I just was in so much pain that I got the urge randomly to like get up and throw up. So I got up, went to the bathroom I threw up and it was just like white, like Ew. foam. Sorry, Ew, this might be hell? like TMI, but like <laughs> when I saw that in the toilet, I was like, wait, this is weird. And then I looked up the appendix thing and it said that like your appendix can become inflamed and like filled with pus. Oh. So I was like, okay, maybe that's what I'm like throwing up or something. I don't know. I went to go lay back down and I was like in a lot of pain at this time. So then. I was like, you know what? I actually might have to go to the hospital. And then that's when I, well, I texted my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And he was at work, like, all the way in Seattle, which is... 40 minutes, maybe? 40, 50 minutes if there's traffic. And he had carpooled that day with a coworker, so he didn't even have his car. So I remember like calling him and he was like, well, I don't know if I can leave, but like, I'll see what I can do. And then I was like, you know what? Let me, I'm just going to call my brother and see like if he's working right now or not. Big so that's brother, when I texted big brother you. <laughs> that's when I texted you. And I was like, what did I say? I was like, hey. Well, you texted me. I didn't see your text. What are you doing? I, all I said was, what are you doing? I'm over here in pain, dying. Psychopath. And instead of making it like an emergency, because I really just hate hospitals. Like I really didn't want to go. So I was just like casually like, what are you doing? And he doesn't respond. I go to the bathroom <laughs> again. I throw up one more time. Oh, go back to the bed. I'm like sitting in bed with my heating pad. Like I'm trying to do whatever I can. I'm like crying at this point because of the pain. And so he still hasn't replied. So I decide <laughs> to call him. And <laughs> I call him and on the phone, I don't know how I sounded. Did I sound calm or like panicky? No, I so don't. yeah, you did sound. Well, when you, when you first... <clears throat> I answered the phone, mm -hmm. and so I saw my phone ringing, but I was in the bathroom. I had just taken a shower. I was getting ready for work because I had work that day. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> I, my phone was in my room. It wasn't in with me because I had just taken a shower, and I was brushing my teeth at the time. And I got a phone call. 
and I was like, is it work? Like, telling me they don't need <clears> me to come in or something? And so, like, I went to my room, and I, like, I picked it up, and I was like, oh, it's Melissa. And I was mm. like, what the fuck? So I answered it, and then she said, <laughs> she was like, hey, where are you? Or what did you? I, I was like, are you home? Yeah, you said, are you home? Like, where are you? Are you home? And I was like, yeah, I'm home. Like, what's up? But I knew as soon as you <clears> said, like, because like, just your voice, you sounded like you were crying. Mm. So it sounded like she was crying. I was like, what? I swear, like, what's happening? Like, I was kind of freaking out a little bit. I was like, what's, she th- what's going on? And she was like, I need you to take me to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, she's crying and she needs to take her to the hospital. <laughs> Which is something that's like never happened. Like, no, this that is doesn't very happen. Rare. So I was like, immediately, like, I thought mm. that you had cut yourself. Yeah, I don't know why he just yeah. assumed that, like, I thought it, it had, had an accident. To do with suicide. Like, like, what? No, no, no. I didn't think it was a suicide. <laughs> Wait, what? No, no. I thought, like, you were, like, cutting, like, a watermelon or, like, cutting, like, something. And the, you, the knife had slipped and you had, like, cut your hand open. Like, yeah, you at were 8 bleeding in the morning, out. I just cut my arm <laughs> off. So that's that's literally what I <clears throat> thought was happening. So I was, like, she had just cut herself and, like, she's bleeding out or, like, she has broken a bone or something. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, what's going on? Like, what's up? And she was like, I'm just having some pains. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what's going on, but like my side hurts really, really bad. And I told him, I was like, I think it's my appendix. Yeah. And, like yeah. I've so been throwing said. up. It just hurts really bad. Like I need to go to the hospital. Yeah. Right now. Right now. Because nothing so, that I was like taking was like helping. You know, I took mm-hmm. the ibuprofen, didn't do anything. But also I think it's because like I threw up so many times. So I threw them up and I just could not like be comfortable standing up her laying down her like i just yeah so then i was like okay well i'll be well the thing i said to you was like dude like call an ambulance that's what i said Mm -hmm. i was like how about you call an ambulance and i'll meet you at the hospital like with my dad like Mm -hmm. my dad was there at the the house Mm -hmm. so i was like dude call an ambulance if you're gonna fucking like pass out (laughs) like what the fuck is happening i was like i am not calling yeah she was like no dude just come pick me up and i was like dude you're gonna fucking die (laughs) just because you don't want to call an ambulance like yeah, I was in so much pain, but I was like, you know, like, I am not about to call an ambulance right now and, like, go in there, in the ambulance, to a hospital by myself. Yeah, I understand. Like, I wouldn't want to do that. <clears throat> so I was like, I don't care if I'm dying. I'm going to wait the 20, 25 minutes for you guys to get here. Yeah, so we got up. Right after that, I immediately I brushed my teeth, finished brushing my teeth, and I told my dad, I was like, Melissa, it needs to go to the hospital right now. She's in some pain. I don't know. And he I was probably like, freaked my dad out too. No, he did because he was asleep, <laughs> and so I woke him up. And he and was like, like, "We need to take Melissa to the hospital." Yeah, and then he was like, mm. "I was like, we need to go right now." <laughs> and then he got up immediately, and he was like, "Dude, text her and tell her to call an ambulance." He also told me that, and I was like, "She doesn't want to call an ambulance." Yeah. And then he was like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna text her then." And he texted you <clears> telling you <throat> like to call an ambulance, and you're like, "No." Yeah. But so yeah, we woke up, and then we we're leaving, and then when we were leaving, the manager came in like what we were live at mm-hmm. and she was like i guess checking everybody at the time and she, she as we were leaving like as soon as we were leaving she got up and she was like hey you guys can't have all these cars parked here by the way because we have like two or three oh, cars oh i, I did not know this part of the story yeah and so it was just like it was just so like the irony right it's like uh-huh. we're trying to fucking leave someone's dying we have and an then, emergency <laughs> and someone's dying like, well yeah that's what i thought <laughs> I was like, we have an emergency, and then she's over here like, you guys can't have all these cars parked here. My dad was like, yeah, we'll move it later. And we just left. <laughs> Gotta go. And it was fucking like, it's kind of like a dick move, but like, she doesn't understand that like, we have an emergency. Yeah. But yeah, and so we got to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And what happened? And then, oh God, this is just, it was just the worst day. Like, I've never experienced pain that bad in my entire life. It hurts so bad. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like... It's very hard to explain. And I thought period cramps were bad. Like, I get really bad period cramps where, like, I even throw up from the pain. But this was just, like, I don't know, a whole nother level. But we get there. We go inside to the ER. And she's like, okay, check in here, blah, blah, blah. We check in. And then they're like, okay, well, you're going to have to stay here in the waiting room until someone calls you. Yeah. Someone calls you in. Until someone, yeah. <sighs> and what a freaking coincidence that... The day that I am in so much pain (laughs) is the day that it's the busiest in the emergency room. Like, there's so many people coming in. Everyone else is also in a lot of pain. (laughs) Yeah, and obviously it's like first come, first serve, basically. Or if you're in more pain than someone else or it's more of an emergency, like you're about to die, then they take you in first. So we sat down and I'm thinking like, okay, this is going to be 
a few minutes, most 30 minutes before like they get me in, you know? Mm -hmm. And my brother's there just like... <laughs> I'm freaking out. I was in so much pain, but he was like trying to just, you know, keep his cool and <laughs> offer me water and snacks. And I'm over here like, no, no. Yeah. And I'm just like getting up every... Like, every like, yeah. At first, when we first got there, it was like every 20, 30 minutes, I would get up, go to the bathroom, and then... Puke her guts out. Yeah. And <clears throat> then 30 minutes go by, and it turns into an hour, and two hours, and three hours, and how, how... I think it was like two hours and 30 minutes just waiting. No way. Yeah, just waiting outside, and then we brought us inside, oh, and then we right, had to wait right, another... Right. Yeah. Um... um so as time goes by, I'm like sitting there. My pain gets like worse to the point where I'm like getting up every five minutes to go to the bathroom and like throw up. Yeah, it was bad. And then I started feeling like I needed to pee every five seconds. And I was like, maybe my appendix is so like swollen that it's like pushing against my bladder and now I have to pee every five seconds. <laughs> That's what I thought. And the reason that I never thought that it could be my kidney was because I was like, well nothing's wrong with my pee like it feels normal when i pee like yeah. it, nothing hurts nothing looks weird like <clears throat> everything's fine so i just thought it was my appendix but um anyways so time goes by and i'm in so a lot much of time pain. Goes by. yeah a lot of time i see people getting called and no one's freaking calling my name so i look at my brother and i'm like bro we need to go up there and like <laughs> tell, tell them something because I'm literally gonna like pass out right now. Yeah, she told I me looked, that. I probably looked dead. Like you're very pale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had like thrown my guts up. Like there was nothing in my stomach, and I was just like in a lot of pain. Like I was in the pain where, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it gets to the point where like you're in a lot of pain. And you don't really, like, care about anything else that's, like, going on around you. You just kind of feel like you're just, like, dead. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Like, it gets to the point where, like, the pain is just, like, the normal now. Yeah. Even though it still freaking hurts like a bitch. But um, anyway, so we go to the front. And you are, like, is there anything that she can take? Like, she needs something for her pain. Yeah. Like, she's about to pass out. Was, and I'm, like, I look at the lady and I'm, like, I'm about to pass out right now. Yeah, because, like, <laughs> here's the thing about me. Like, I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> like, very... super, like, antisocial, <laughs> but I don't want to, like, confront anybody. Like, I'm just, like, bro. If, like, if it was like, he me. Just, he doesn't, like, make a big deal about stuff. Yeah, obviously. Like, I'm not going to be a Karen. <clears throat> But if it was me, like if I was if I was in your situation, I would be like I would want Melissa to take charge and yeah. like, help me. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well I'm gonna have some empathy, and like try to do my best <laughs> right here because like I don't want to talk to anybody. But I was like, she's in a lot of pain. I can see it, so I have to like man up. Just man up, bro. <laughs> Go talk to somebody. So I was like, I'm gonna fucking be Karen right now. Like, well I wasn't gonna be like a Karen, but I was gonna be like she needs help like so i went up to there and i was like hey uh my sister like she's telling me that she's about to pass out like her pain levels are in incredible and like she needs something can you what can you give her like right now mm -hmm. i need something right now and she was like um let me talk to a doctor and some fucking guy came in with like a buzz cut guy. he was like actually we can't we can't give you anything right now i was like are you sure you can't give her anything like at all and he was like we can't give her anything while you're waiting out there and yeah like, we don't give any pain medication like in the waiting room basically yeah. and i was like oh okay well how long is it gonna be then mm -hmm. and i was like how long is it gonna be until we get called and then like she was like you guys have three people in front of you so however long that is and i was like all right thanks for nothing yeah <laughs> i didn't say that and like, it was right. more than three people yeah a lot of people went in we counted the people i was kind of <laughs> like, like five counting. i kind of at least call someone's name um but yeah anyways so finally they call my name and mm -hmm. i'm like super happy i think that this is it i'm gonna go back there and they're gonna shoot me up with something i don't care what it is mm -hmm. but it's gonna like completely like make me feel so much better um they were so full that i didn't even have a room like yeah. i had to be out in the hallway on a bed a stretcher like, yeah stretcher whatever they call them those that like move around and she was like, I'm sorry, I apologize that we have to, like, see you in the hallway. We're just super packed right now. And sorry for the way. And she kept apologizing. And I was like, it's okay. Like, I just, I want something now. That's what I thought, that they were just going to, like, give me something then. 
but still sitting back there it was like another how long i think an at hour. least at least like 45 minutes but i think an hour yeah it was like i don't even know but a long time yeah because i remember you of got up multiple pain. times i got up asking, two or three times asking like hey when is the pain gonna come in like the pain medication they were mm-hmm. they were like we're gonna give you morphine or something mm-hmm. and i was like and i got up at least two times at least two times i think it was three but i think at least two times mm-hmm. i was like is it on the way yet like where is it and then the that guy was helpful like it was a guy and he was yeah like, they were all nice back there which was but very calm the thing that i like i was upset about because like there was this <laughs> lady this black lady that came in and she was the nurse that was gonna administer the morphine or whatever mm-hmm. and she was like yeah i'm gonna do it for you and then the guy back there was like no i got it don't worry about it and then she was like no i can do it really quickly and he was like i'm, I'm gonna do it no worries you don't have to you don't have to cover me or something like that and then that took another like 20 minutes really yeah you didn't remember that like she was about to attention. administer the thing and then he was like i got it don't worry you don't have to cover me because like because uh. like he was so busy doing stuff and he didn't want her to do it it's like bro she's in pain like i was gonna say like bro just let her i was like just do it i was about to be like just do it yeah he's fine like just do it but he was like I so he that. was so stubborn like saying like <laughs> i got it don't worry about it i'm like bro she needs it right now i can't wait but yeah he said no and the way I didn't wait another 20 minutes for him to get the morphine. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, it was just straight into the IV. In yeah. The arm. So it took like one minute for it to yeah. just kick in. Oh, my God. You have that was like the greatest feeling of all time. She was high. I, I don't even know how it. to explain it, but she like put it in, obviously. And the nurse, she was like super nice um, or whoever she was. I don't know. It was this older lady. And um she was like, you're going to feel a slight, like, warmth in the chest or in the head first before it, like, reaches the area that's, like, in pain or whatever. And I was like, okay. And if I wasn't in this much pain, I would probably be a little bit worried. Like, I've never had morphine before. I don't know what it's going to feel like or whatever. But I was just, like, ready for anything. Yeah. So, yeah, she gave me the morphine. And, yeah, after, like, a minute or two, like, I was, like, it completely like just i felt it like go through my whole body it was kind of like a warm sensation it was kind of weird um but then after that like i just felt great and i finally was able to like fall asleep so i knocked out Mm -hmm. and my brother was just there sitting like in a chair at the end of like my bed thingy yeah um just chilling (laughs) just chilling (laughs) and then they woke me up and then they took me to go take or do a cat scan or whatever which was also the first time i'd ever done that i've never been in the like circle thing it like spins around you mm-hmm. um you're like going laying down mm-hmm. head first and they like put something in you so that your organs like glow oh shit and it makes you feel really warm too like he was like you're gonna feel like you like peed yourself but you're not gonna pee yourself don't worry <laughs> and i was like okay you're not gonna pee yourself you're gonna poop yourself <laughs> <laughs> and it actually did feel really warm down there like i peed myself but I was like, no, I'm fine. Um, and then after that, um, just the small little movement from getting out of the bed to go into the CAT scan thing, I was already like starting to feel the pain again. Like the pain was at a six, I remember telling her. And a she was six. like, yeah, she was like, do you think it's because of the like movement and stuff? And I was like, yeah. So they didn't give me any more morphine after that. That was the only time that they gave me that so after that i just kind of laid down and just try to sleep it off and then yeah long story short they told you you had kidney stones Mm -hmm. yeah how many did you have did they know how much they said i had a few kidney stones and the reason that i was in a lot of pain was because one of them was like 90 percent out like 90 percent of the way out like it's it's in your kidney and then it's gonna plast there's like a your kidneys are connected to your bladder by like Mm -hmm. a a string a little tube thingy basically and that's where the stone was like passing through so it was incredible amount of pain yeah it's so crazy how that it's like that small little incon mm-hmm. you know that thing can just cause yeah so much pain. it's freaking crazy but yeah everything has to work perfectly in the body mm-hmm. or else you feel pain it's crazy so basically he was just like you're gonna be able to pee it out and they just gave me some like medication and stuff and then i don't know they didn't say anything about the ones remaining in my kidney but i'm <laughs> <laughs> i don't know well, like they give you some medication right yeah so maybe like those would dissolve it that's what i imagine but i don't know i don't know who knows but anyways i feel great now 
So that's that story. <laughs> yeah, and I'm deathly afraid of getting kidney stones because <laughs> yeah. my mom had it and now Melissa had it. Her brother but had it. But he's definitely going to... Don't say that. You're definitely going to get it at some point in your life. Don't say that. <laughs> I don't... My dad hasn't gotten it, so hopefully I don't get it. Uh, my dad experiences pain every now and then. Yeah, but he doesn't have kidney It's probably his kidney, but... I'm deathly afraid of getting kidney. I don't want that. I don't want to feel that pain. Yeah, it's crazy. But that was that story. Alrighty. <laughs> that took fun so story. Much time. Such a fun story, that one. Uh, let's get into some dreams. All right, so I've done some research about uh, dreams and what they are and what they mean. <clears throat> so let's just get it right into that. Let's get right into the love of Travis. Oh, yeah. Frog. Dreams. 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 dreams, 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 dreams. It's like passion. Dreams. <laughs> Anyways. Dreams are just so freaking cool. Yeah, so here, let me... <laughs> can just I just, can I just read dream. this, please? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, I've done some research about just, like, what dreams are. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, dreams are stories or images our minds create and visualize while we sleep. That's just, like, the generic why we dream and why we see stuff while we're sleeping. Our brain doesn't sleep, so it stays pretty active um, while we sleep. Our body's, our body's resting, <clears throat> but our brain stays almost pretty much awake during it. It takes obviously like, you know, it takes a rest because your your body isn't doing so much. So your brain takes a rest, but it doesn't go to sleep like your body does. Mm. So it has to do something. Uh, research suggests that sleeping helps remove toxins that build up in your brain while you're awake and just like moving around. So like it's kind of just like resetting your body for the next day. But uh, biologically, we do not know why we need sleep. Like we don't know why like that. Like, why do we need sleep to, to just function? Like, you know how much time we would waste just, like, sleeping? Mm -hmm. It's just, like, kind of sucks. Um, but anyways, sleeping can happen anytime during sleep. The most vivid dreams sleeping happen. Sleeping can happen anytime during sleep? Oh. Is that what I said? <laughs> <laughs> that is what you said. Oops. Uh, dreaming mm -hmm. can happen anytime uh, during sleeping. The most vivid dreams happen uh, during rapid eye movement. I guess it's, like, when REM you're... Sleep. REM, yeah, there you go. Mm. REM, rapid eye movement. It's just like when your eyes are closed and your eyes are moving around. I don't know why they That's call it weird. that. That's weird. I've never seen my eyes do that when I sleep. <laughs> okay, dad. <laughs> so uh, it's estimated that you have three to, or uh, four to seven dreams per night usually or three to seven dreams per night. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. What? It's pretty higher than uh, I would have guessed because I only remember <clears throat> one, if anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's basically three types of dreams normal just regular like happy dreams nightmares my favorite and lucid dreams also my favorite you can't only have one favorite you can't have both of them to be your favorite okay lucid dreaming is definitely up there yeah lucid dreaming is pretty crazy uh so nightmares are obviously the bad scary ones that usually happen uh because of stress uh fear trauma or watching too many scary movies that's a good one emotional <laughs> problems drug use illness etc oh wow okay and lucid dreams can happen when you are aware you're dreaming. It happens, uh, let's see, it happens when there's a, a boost of activity in the parts of your brain that are usually resting while sleeping. So sometimes your brain starts to wake up all of a sudden. And so uh, your body's not used to, I mean, it's not ready to get up yet, but your brain is like, it's time to get up. So it kind of happens when you're like, you start realizing, hey, I'm actually asleep right now. And you want to wake up. And you want to wake up. That happens to me so many times. But you know what's weird is that so many people confuse lucid dreaming with sleep paralysis, which they're completely different. And I don't know why people... Like, well, here's the thing. I was going to talk about sleep paralysis as well because it says, or what I wrote down was, um, uh, it happens, also lucid dreaming happens during, uh, between REM and being awake. So that's what I talked about. Like mm -hmm. when your brain is like, it's time to get up now. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's in between the rapid eye movement and waking up. So it happens somewhere in between oh, there. Okay. And so uh, then there's also sleep paralysis, mm -hmm. which happens because uh, your body is like, it's time to get up, but your brain is, uh, or what's it called? Like your brain puts your body into a paralysis when you're going to sleep. So you don't move mm -hmm. around and like act your dreams mm -hmm. out. <laughs> so then uh, when your when your brain is like, it's time to get up, but your body is still paralyzed because mm -hmm. it's still asleep, then that's what happens with sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's exactly how it happens, but I've heard that that's, like, what it yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know exactly either, but... Um, but, yeah, like you said, 
the only time I've gotten sleep paralysis, the only way that I get sleep paralysis is uh, right after I have a lucid dream. Mm. So like when I have a lucid dream, then I'm like, okay, it's not, I'm actually dreaming right now. And I need to get up and I fight myself to get up. But then that forces me into sleep paralysis. Mm. I've never like I have that. I get to that point where I realize that I'm dreaming. Mm hmm. Or, or, or that I'm sleeping and I'm, like, trying to, like, kind of wake myself up. Like, sometimes I'll be like, okay, maybe if I, like, slap myself hard enough in my dream <laughs> or yell or something, like, I'll wake up. But I'm never, you know how, like, sleep paralysis, it's, like, you know that you're laying down in your bed and, like, you can, like, sometimes you can, like, see around you and stuff like that. Right, right. That I've never gotten to that point where I'm, like, I know I'm laying down and I can't move. So you've never had sleep paralysis? No. Like, I'm just still stuck in my dream, but I know that I need to wake up or I know mm -hmm. that I want to wake up. Yeah, that one, that's pretty weird because my <clears throat> dad gets it and I get it. I don't, I've never asked my mom. I don't think she's ever gotten it either. I don't either. think so. But I get it pretty frequently. Um, my dad gets it a lot, but it's like one of the scariest things, like for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but let's see what else I have written down here. I um, also have why we dream. Uh, scientifically, there's no meaning towards our dreams. It's kind of just your mind thinking while you're sleeping. I mean, it's got to do something because it's still active while mm -hmm. um, whatever. And it says like there's been research that say like it's possibly just bringing up past experiences or memories sometimes. And then maybe just like daydreams while you while you're sleeping. You know, you have daydreams like you think about, man, what if I did this in life or what if I did that? And your brain just thinks about that while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. And then it just like creates images for you. <clears throat> um but let's see uh studies found that sleeping is helpful for your memories actually during uh during sleep short-term memories stored in the hippocampus in your brain move to permanent storages another part of your brain hmm. so like all those memories when you're sleeping they kind of just like move into like the long-term memories parts hmm. so like whatever happened during the day if it's pretty impactful in your life it's going to move out down to like the long-term memories hmm. and it'll hold it there forever so yeah. like, it's like when you're embarrassed about something mm -hmm. like you peed your pants a lot of those memories are like come from like school and stuff <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah so that's I, I don't know why your brain would just choose to like remember those just mm -hmm. be probably just because they were impactful and yeah. like because you think about them a lot of my dreams are like i'm in a school yeah i've done some research about that as well because i had some dreams like that yeah that always happens to me i don't know why i'm always like in a, some sort of high school or like huge building yeah, it's just you're a psycho. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, they can improve your, your creativity, like how many ideas like just come from dreams themselves. Uh, and dreams also sometimes help you solve problems you're struggling with. Like obviously, if you're working on like something at work, and you get enlightened by your dreams. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, other research shows that dreams are compiled of fragments of multiple life experiences aka memories and anticipated future events you might go through huh yeah i don't know how they came to that conclusion but i read that somewhere uh like maybe you have something coming up and you think about it yeah and then you'd like dream about it probably uh <clears throat> and this is where all the uh every dream has a meaning for your well-being and your psyche comes from mm -hmm. like your dreams tell the future and stuff like that i think that's where people get that idea Mm. like how people say that your dreams can like tell your future or something like that you heard about that <laughs> like no. fortune telling your dreams like your dreams are fortune telling oh, like what could happen in the future or like if you have like a reoccurring dream and then it's like is that gonna happen mm -hmm. in my real life mm -hmm. so like you get into a really bad car crash and i just keep, keep dreaming about that and then oh, you get into a car yeah. crash i That's don't know scary yeah it's pretty creepy okay. so anyways that's just a little bit of research about uh, what I've done to... Uh, oh, this also says that uh, they can help you process your emotions uh, for the day. If you're sad during the day, you might have a sad dream. And they like they kind of comes up. Whatever you experienced in your um, in your day comes kind of comes up in your dreams. Mm. And it helps you process those emotions. But it's pretty freaking abstract, right? All your dreams feel like they have no meaning anyways. Yeah, most of them are just very random yeah um so the study shows that uh the amygdala the part of your brain responsible for emotions in waking life is active during rapid eye movement so mm. uh 
that emotional state of your brain is active while you're having dreams, I think it's just because, oh, I don't know why, but I'm assuming it's probably just because you're having emotions in your dream. So that kind of shows up that it's active. So yeah, that's kind of all the research I have for dreams. That also kind of like ties into how you can like feel things in your dream, you know? Yeah. Like as if physically. it were real. Yeah. Physically or emotional? Mm, yeah, physically. <laughs> I feel like. I don't think I've ever had a... Uh, like something like that what you never, never felt anything physical no like i've like no i haven't like i know like if people say like oh i got stabbed in a dream i felt mm -hmm. it like i've never felt that what i've never felt something like that i've felt multiple things oh. <laughs> <laughs> like you know how some people like how some people experience like wet dreams and stuff you know? oh yeah like well, they feel when they are doing stuff with another person right. in the dream and you can actually feel it how many wet dreams have you had in your life I probably count them on one hand. Yeah, I was going to say that as well. I don't think I've had that many. Mm -hmm. So, like, that counts, though, as you, like, feeling, feeling something emotion. physical. Yeah, physical, for sure. I've also gotten stabbed and, like, felt it, like, if it I've was never real. i felt pain, I guess, is what I was mm -hmm. trying to say. Yeah, it's crazy. That is weird. All right. Do you want to talk about the dreams that you had and that you wrote down? <laughs> <coughs> okay, so... As my brother was explaining, we decided to do like an experiment where an experiment an experiment <laughs> where we write down our dreams that we have for like a week for it? like a week yeah um, and then we like you know bring them on here and we like dissect them and see maybe if there's a meaning. Well, what we're supposed to do is have a dream and then look up the like generically what happened in the dream and look it up in the meaning about it and then write it down <laughs> uh-huh but me i don't know what it is like usually i have pretty intense dreams yeah, where i, I can when... like remember them and they're very like vi like vivid for mm -hmm. me i feel like but for some reason this past week where i'm trying to do this experiment i either dream something but when i wake up like i just don't remember it at all or i just haven't like really dreamt anything because, so. like, I remember when we used to live together, like, I swear, like, every other day, she was like, dude, let me tell you about my dream. It's like, yeah. every other day, she We would just both wakes do up. that, though. Yeah. Well, more, I, we more, would more wake you, though. Mostly. Yeah, I would wake up and be like, bro, I had this freaking crazy dream. And then sometimes <laughs> he'd be like, you know what I dreamt last night? Yeah. And, no. like, it would just be a whole thing. People talk about dreams. People make fun of people that talk about their dreams. You know that, right? Do they? Yeah, like, there's, like, memes that, like oh you're one of those <laughs> you're one of those that just wants to tell everybody about their stupid dream uh, no one gives think, a shit about uh, okay well to me <laughs> if i'm telling you about it it's because like Oops, it just felt so <laughs> it just felt so real to me that i feel like i need to explain it or it felt like a movie you know some dreams feel like a whole ass like movie yeah that's true it's just so weird also like <clears throat> i was telling my dad that we were talking about dreams well a while ago but he brought up how like if you dream for like if you like set an alarm and you like you're like, okay, I want to snooze it for like 10 minutes mm -hmm. or snooze it for like five minutes, mm -hmm. right? And then the dream feels like it's been like mm -hmm. three hours. Like how does it fit into that short amount of time that mm -hmm. you were sleeping actually? It's crazy. Yeah. Either it just happens so fast or or maybe just like obviously time is... You're, it's different. Yeah. I, I heard that Relativity. Dreams is, dreams is like a bunch of like fast moving like images just playing in your brain. But then, for you, it's like... A whole like thing but really it's not what i don't know anyways <laughs> i don't know if i saw it in a movie or if that's real but so i only got one dream great that i remembered but i do have other ones that i want to talk about that did you write down the meaning no because i don't think this has meaning I'm, i told you i don't think it has a meaning they all it's have very meaning. straightforward and weird okay <laughs> so basically oh, well, for your other dreams you didn't look at the meaning for those ones either well they're not really, like, dreams. Okay, go ahead. Okay, anyway, this is complicated. So, the one that I dreamt that I remember that I wrote down was... I We were... It was you, me, and my mom, and mm -hmm. our aunt. Okay. Should I say your name? Yeah, fuck it. Oh, my tia Linda. Okay. <laughs> so, she was with us, and then... We were at her house, and for some reason, she was smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> she was, like, smoking weed, and I was high at this time, but, like, she didn't, I didn't smoke with her or anything, and she didn't know that I was high. Well, at least I thought she didn't know. 
But then I realized that she knew that I was like super high and she didn't care. She was just like chill about it. And I was like, okay, maybe like one day I can like smoke with her or something. So, so she was also smoking weed? She was smoking in the house, but I wasn't smoking. I was just How are you previously high? already high. Oh, I don't know. Okay. And then she got super high and she was like offering my mom to smoke weed. <laughs> And my mom, she was just saying, no, 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 it's fine. I don't want to do that. And I was like, mom, come on. Like, I thought it, would, I thought it was going to be so fun. Like, we were just all going to, like, smoke together and just be high as fuck. Right. <laughs> and my mom just kept saying no. And then suddenly we were, like, outside this, like, airport or something, like, in this huge, like, parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what we were running away from, but my mom was like, hurry up, we need to go. And, like, something was happening, but I don't remember what. And you were, like, somewhere else. Like, we lost you or something. Like, we were all running to the car. And so I was running with my mom. And then she was like, she was like, let's go. Let's go get in the car. And I get in the car. And then I was like, wait, what about my brother? And she was like, it's fine. He has his own car. Like, he knows what to do. Like, he'll meet us <laughs> wherever. And I was like, yeah, you oh, abandon okay. me. Yeah, like, for some reason, like, we had a whole plan. And, like, you knew the plan. And you knew what, like you had a, like a little mission i don't know oh, okay i don't know it was weird and that was basically all i can remember so so that was the recent one the recent dream yeah that's the, the one that i could remember from this okay. week you could have looked up like what drugs mean in your dreams see like i don't think it had a meaning i think it was just like i don't know it probably doesn't have a meaning but you could have looked up like drugs Dr drugs and meaning <laughs> maybe i you was high like, when i just, dreamt it oh i was gonna say i don't know <laughs> I think it, when drugs show up in your dream, I think it means. Um, it and I think it was like weird too that it was so much that. Okay. They show up in your dreams. I think it was weird that it was my aunt, uh, yeah. randomly, you know, and she was the one that was getting high. Maybe that has some sort of meaning to it, but. You think about my Linda recently. Maybe I just want to like smoke weed with her or something. <laughs> Why are you smoking <laughs> with your mom? Because my mom would never do it. Yeah. So I have a. A dream ran down. It's one of the. It's the first day that we did it. <clears throat> this one is actually pretty. I mean, it's pretty short dreams. Both of them. I had two that I remembered. Okay. Um. So it says I wrote down. I vaguely remember riding my skateboard through the halls of my old high school, and it was at. Mm -hmm. I'll bleep that out or cut that. <laughs> uh, my old high school and seeing all my old friends, but they couldn't see me. And I knew that they couldn't see me. And I was also moving, like, really slowly through the hallways while, like, they were, like, behind this, like, shimmery, like, like, wall, like, this cloak. And so, like, I was riding, like, really, I was riding at normal speed, but they were all, like, slow. It was fucking weird. I don't know what was happening. Whoa. So you were, like, a ghost or something. Yeah, I was, like, a like ghost Like, you were just something. in a different... Dimension mm -hmm. or something. So, yeah, that's what, and then said, yeah, I was also moving really <laughs> slowly, Oh, no. I guess I mixed it up here, but I remember moving normal speed, and they were moving really slowly. Mm. Um, so I don't know what that meant, but I was riding my skateboard. And then the another one is actually pretty awkward because my ex was in it. Okay, fine. And then it says, I got home from work, and she was just in my room <laughs> just chilling. And I said, like, what are you doing here? Like, what? why are you in my room? Uh -huh. And then she was like, I just came to see you. And then I put on a movie, and then we watched it, and that was it. You remember what movie it was? No. Uh oh. That's it says I put on a movie, watched it, and that's all I remember. Hmm. In my dream, I just was like, oh, okay, that's fine. Uh oh. It's like what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Like okay, it's fine that you just randomly show up in my room. Yeah, and so the meanings I wrote down some are some meanings. It says dreaming about school can mean uh, social. You have uh, social concerns, insecurities, and anxieties. Ugh. Oh. Damn, well, so, that's the majority of my dreams. That's what so. I was going to say about yours. Like, I did some research about school and it says you have social concerns, mm. social insecurities, or social anxieties. If you are no longer in school, they can point to an unresolved childhood issues. Okay, very spot on. Yeah, you see? So that's why you could have done <clears throat> some research about schools. And it says a dream of school hallways is what I dreamt of specifically. That represents being worried about a change or transitional moment you are in your life. That's so crazy how something as specific as the that hallway, yeah. has that meaning. Yeah. I don't know how, you think where they real? get that from. I don't think so. I mean, this is people that like, you know, dreams have meanings kind of people. Do you know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> so this is not like scientifically like Obviously proven. Not. Like Scientific school hallway no, means. Scientists this. say that dreams have no meaning. Oh, okay. 
So, but these are from like uh, websites that say like <coughs> dreams have been. You can look up what your dreams. Mm-hmm. Be. School hallways represent. Uh, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's kind of true. Like I'm getting to a certain age. I'm transitioning in my life. I'm trying to, you know, move out and whatever. So it's like maybe change. that's maybe that's why a change that's happening. Mm-hmm. And then another one, or the one about the ex. Said, dreaming about your ex uh, could mean you're looking for closure or still trying to work past that, uh, past the way that it ended in your mind. So not how it physically ended, but how it ended up mm. here. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. Uh, not <clears throat> how it like it physically ended, but just like how you think it ended or whatever. Like if you were from like an outside perspective, you're still mm-hmm. trying to work that out in your brain. Do you feel like you got closure or no? No, because I just don't want to talk to them. I don't want to. And you're fine with that? You're fine with just like living your life without closure? I want to ignore it. Oh. I want to suppress it. Okay, Aquarius. Is that is that a uh, healthy? That's, no, that's not healthy <laughs> at all. Yeah, I want to just <laughs> erase that or suppress it. Is I don't know if it's like there's oppressed memories and suppressed memories. Mm-hmm. I don't know which one is like you're <laughs> physically trying to suppress it or just ones that are oppressed just on their own unconsciously mm. so i think suppressed <clears throat> is the one where you're like you knowingly are trying to forget about it i think it. so i don't know and oppressed is the ones that are like unconsciously yeah they're they're i'm suppressing those kind of dreams and memories hmm. <laughs> Learn uh, something new every day <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about that so, um <laughs> let's see i'm t- i wanted to know another one. Oh. I want to talk about this one because this one was a sort of a nightmare. And, okay, so I want to talk about this because <clears throat> I frequently have dreams where I they're very short, like really short dreams where I am dreaming something and then something scary happens and I wake up gasping for air. What? And that happens like at least two or three times a week. That's probably only happened like once in my entire life where I actually wake up like <gasps> like scared. I don't wake up like that dramatically, but it's like, <laughs> it's either like me like going like this and waking up, like mm. jerking myself awake. It's not like me falling off. Like, it's not one of those dreams. I'm just like, just someone, randomly? yeah, someone attacked me or touched my face oh. like this. And I'm like, whoa, that's how I wake up. Or if something creepy happened or like scary, I just go, <laughs> and that's how I wake up mm. like that. And mm-hmm. that happens like frequently. I don't know why that happens. but So you have nightmares frequently? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess they're nightmares, but yeah. Do you wake up all the time with nightmares in that way? no oh okay well like i do it does kind of like wake me up if something like really scary happens Mm -hmm. but rarely am i like startled like that right i don't know so anyways that happens a lot to me at least two to three times a week i wake up during the night or when i'm taking a nap Hmm. and dreams like that happen so this is one of those times let's see um I cut the dream in half because the other part was boring. <clears throat> and so it says, I was cleaning up a mess in the kitchen um, that I had made somewhere. And then I started picking up some popcorn off the floor that was there because I had made popcorn apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, I was cleaning up a spill of water and I heard Romeo cry, my dog Romeo, trying to, crying like trying to get out of my mom and dad's room he was in there like locked up for some reason Mm -hmm. and then he just like and i was like romeo shh be quiet because i I don't know why i was keeping him in there but i was he was in there and then it said and he just kept crying but the crying turned into like a mix of a dog and a human baby crying and whimpering oh my god that's very disturbing yeah so i was like and remember i remember thinking in my dream like he doesn't sound like romeo it sounds like a like a baby (laughs) But he was like a mix between like a dog whimpering and crying and a human baby crying. And so then um, he just kept crying. And I remember thinking, that doesn't sound normal. Am I dreaming? Like I said, I had thoughts about, mm. like, am I dreaming? What's going on right now? And so I got up and I walked over to the door angrily, it says, to <laughs> tell Romeo to stop crying. And I'm almost done cleaning the spill. Oh, I guess I didn't want Romeo to lick up the spill. Mm. So. So I barged in and I saw my two parents, but they were all deformed. Like their faces were deformed. It says their faces were all twisted and ugly and they had too many legs and too many arms. Ew. And they were operating on Romeo, making him deformed as well. They were giving him extra legs and extra ears. Franken dog? Yeah. So my parents were deformed and they were like de- performing surgery on Romeo what in the their room. What the fuck did you watch before this? I have no idea. I don't think I watched anything. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 
That is very disturbing. Yeah, so it says they were giving him extra legs and extra ears and like stuff like that. And mm. then as soon as I opened the door, he got up and ran at me barking and trying to attack me. Mm. So when I opened the door, I was like, Romeo, stop. And I saw that and it all happened just like in quick succession. I opened it, it said stop, and the Romeo ran at me. And that's when you woke up? And that's when I woke up like, because <laughs> mm. he like bit my face or something. And then I was like, Romeo, get off me. Because Romeo was sleeping in my room. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so I was, like, traumatized. Like, Romeo's going to eat my face. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's one dream that I had. That's very weird. I didn't look up the meaning on that one because it was just too specific. I didn't think. I was, like, dreaming about deformities. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Some things are just random, like, I feel like. Yeah. And then let's see which other one I can talk about. Talk a boot. Talk a boot. What's talk that about all your about? dreams. Oh, yeah, that one's boring. Okay. We'll talk about this one. Let's see. It says, I was chilling on a dock by the water with two girls and a friend. I don't remember who the two girls were, but the friend was Sinan. It's my mm. cousin. And it was like a dock that everyone walked on, like a California dock with like small shops around, you know what I'm talking about. Mm. And we were like under, like by the water, by the pier. And there was like a dock above us, but there was like some shops there as well. Mm. Um, and then it said, and this guy walked by and he started talking to the two girls I was with. And then he started singing to them. And and it says, and it was like hella cringe, but it was kind of like we were in a movie. So like it wasn't cringe, you know, like if it happened in a movie, it would be kind of cute. <laughs> but since it was happening in real life, I was like, yo, this is fucking cringe. Why is he singing to these girls right now? Like in a romantic way? Like in a romantic way. Did he have way. a guitar or just singing? Let's see. <laughs> And it was, oh, and it says, and I think the guy was Noah Centineo or Centineo. What is his name? Do you know, the, to the boys I've ever loved. What's that what we Oh, call? yeah. Oh, to I all the boys I've ever loved. I don't know how you say Centineo. Yeah, Centineo, Centineo, I don't know. <laughs> that guy. So it was him. Oh, and he, he was He was singing? in my dream. Yeah, he was singing. He was saying something like, I have a record store. I'm not a famous artist, but I sell their stuff. That's got to count for something, but in a song. So that's what he was saying. Oh, he was like very romantic. Yeah, very romantic. He was like <laughs> trying to say like I'm not a, a rich guy, but I sell rich people's things. Mm. I don't know. So he wow. wanted them to come to the record store that he worked at, like to talk. So to in them. the dream, he wasn't Noah. Like he wasn't the fucking no, famous. He was. He was like just some random guy. Oh, okay. But he was probably acting because he's an actor. Mm. Who knows? <laughs> and so let's see. Anyway, then he left, and the two girls liked him or whatever. And I didn't feel weird about it because I don't I don't think the girls were with us. They were just like hanging out friends. with us and like talking to us. Yeah, mm. they were just friends. Anyway, it's nighttime now and I'm on the dock and across the dock, I see some people having a party or something. But you'd have to swim a long way to get there through the water in the dark. It's nighttime now. Mm. And I see like people having a party like over there. I think mm -hmm. it's maybe like 500 feet, but you just have to swim there. And it says, and then I see this kid jump in the water with this like fake nerf gun and his older sister jumps in after him that kid tries to get away but his older sister won't let him and then his dad comes out running and says get him don't let him get away he's not a strong enough swimmer to make it so the kid wants to go to the party i think but the sister is like he's gonna drown before he gets there <laughs> so i need to get him and so the girl jumps in but then she also starts drowning <laughs> so then the dad looks at me Says the dad looks at me and tells me to help them out. Mm. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm just here looking. I'm just at the dock. Like, why, why can't you jump? <laughs> so it says I jump in the water and take the kid from her arms and push him towards the dock. And then the girl starts swimming as well. And it says that's all I remember. And so I guess I looked up a meaning. And it says becoming old scares me. In an example I found, it's exactly the same as my dream. A young man saving a baby from drowning. He's taken all the responsibilities of an adult now, work, family, etc., and he's drowning in it. He feels there's a part of him becoming old before his time. And the baby or kid in my situation represents me at a younger stage, being happy, just being alive with no worries. And he needs that part in his life to continue to be happy. If the baby had drowned, it would have meant that a part of me had died and I would no longer feel enjoyment or zest for my life. Whoa. Yeah. Pretty fucking weird. So you really have a problem with being old. Like I don't know. Old. I don't know if that's like, well, like it says like a man was saving a baby from drowning, but I was just saving some random kid that I was drowning. 
Is it exactly the same? I don't know. And that kid just happened to have an older sister. Yeah, that's true, actually. I haven't thought that. About was that was also trying to save him. Yeah. Which, that was a, a lot of our childhood. Not like me trying to save you from drowning. Maybe that happened once. <laughs> I don't think but so. Well, like, I, I obviously had to take care of you because yeah. you were younger than me. <clears throat> so, yeah, maybe I am. Maybe so I'm that afraid was of you, getting maybe. old. But at least I saved him, though. Because <laughs> it says if, if he would have died, that would have meant I, a part of me would have died. Yeah. So, still alive. Still alive, but... Still getting old. Barely. <laughs> still becoming an adult it's okay don't worry maybe don't it's be just scared. because i like i'm getting to there yeah you, know? you don't want to have all the adult responsibilities yeah yeah but do i though my child i'm not a child that doesn't mean you're a child but you know it's a difference yeah anyways so that was all your dreams that was kind of all the dreams <clears throat> that were interesting and had meanings to them oh actually i want to talk about another one that i had a long time ago um let's see i have a, I have a picture and the meaning of it because i dreamt about uh an octopus and this one was way before i had even we thought had about even this. thought about this so mm -hmm. but i wrote it down because it was pretty significant um oh let's see here i don't remember specifically what uh, the dream was but I just looked at the, the, the meaning it says the dreams about an octopus can symbolize chaos in your life after you see uh, such a dream you should avoid thoughtless actions especially in personal life the modern dream books state that dreams about octopuses represent worries and pressure on people's wills I don't know what that means it says in general dreaming of an octopus reveals that you are in a problematic condition this dream can also be related to stress you may not realize that you're stressed, but this dream can come as a symbol. Also, specific conflicts such as work make you might make you frustrated. I don't know why dreaming about an octopus would mean that you're stressed or something because it has so many arms. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But that's a very, like, random thing to dream about. I an don't octopus? feel like many people dream about an octopus, you know? I don't think I've ever dreamt about an octopus in yeah, my I dreamt about, life. I th I'm remembering that I dreamt about an octopus coming out of the sea and then chasing me. It was a big octopus. Yeah, that seems like it would have some sort of meaning to it. Because that's, like, just so weird. About an octopus? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that could be. But where do they get these ideas that octopus meaning you're stressed? Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't know. know. Were you stressed during this time? Uh, it was, um, when was it? About two months ago. Yeah, I think so you were. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, that's all the dreams that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Well, I want to talk real quickly about a dream mm -hmm. um since we don't have much time left but it's just a dream that like really like just st stuck with me and all stood out to me because i've never had any other dream like this this was like well it happened like two times but i'll talk about the first time it happened because it was just so weird to me um and i still don't really know like what really it is but something about also we didn't really talk about um this but like astral projection and stuff like that which is oh, another yeah. thing to dreams and something that a lot of people like you know is that do. a real thing or does it just like people actually have that i don't know i feel like people do like there's a whole like steps to do it and whatever kind of like lucid yeah. dreaming but um one time we it was so long ago it was when we were living in the apartments in Mm -hmm. um so it was a, lot, a while ago i don't remember how old cut I was. that out yeah beep that out um but i remember i was laying in bed and i went to like go take a nap like this is real okay this is not the dream yet okay but i went to go lay down in my bed and i was like ready to go like i was taking a nap or something i think it was like after school or something and i remember falling asleep and then i woke up in my dream but it felt so real that I thought it was real. Oh, and, I think I remember this dream. Yeah. And usually, like, I, I n kind of know when I'm dreaming. Like, usually, that's why I feel like I lucid dream a lot. Because I almost instantly know, like, if something happens that's just, like, weird. Or, like, you know, it just looks weird in your dream. Like, it doesn't look real. Mm -hmm. But this was, like, so real. Like, the layout of the room. I was laying in my bed. The same sheets. Everything was, like, the same. The mm -hmm. room. The, like, apartment layout and everything. But everything was dark, like it was nighttime out and all the lights were off. 
And I remember waking up and I was like, oh, shoot, I slept hella long. I, I slept into the night and I didn't hear anything. So I got up and I was like thinking like, oh, my parents are probably like in the living room or like you're going to be awake or something. Mm-hmm. And I walk out of my room and everything is like dark. Like you just see like some light coming in through the window, um, like of a light outside or like a, the moon or something and no one's awake like I don't see anyone so I start saying like mom dad or I I don't know if I called for you or not but no one was like answering and I went into my mom and dad's room and no one was home and I was like what everyone just like leave how do what's going on right now why is everything so quiet and why is no one home and like Romeo wasn't there Mm -hmm. nothing and so I started getting a little freaked out because I was like okay this is weird and I don't remember if I tried turning on the lights or not but point is throughout the whole dream it was just like darkness and I was like well I don't know what to do like what should I do like I just kept like calling out for you guys but no one was answering and then I remember even like opening the door to go outside and I walked out of the apartment everything was exactly the same once again like the little playground area in the front like I was just like the light poles everything was just exactly the same it's so weird And I walk out. But it was nighttime. Yeah, it was nighttime. And I walk out and like the little lamp posts are on or whatever. And you just hear like crickets. It just sounds like, you know, how it would sound at night. But there was no cars, like no sound of like people, nothing. And then I got scared because I don't know why. I just got this feeling of like I'm alone in the entire like world. Like it's just me and it's dark and it's going to be like this forever. And I don't know why I felt like that. And I felt like I was trapped, but I didn't feel like I was dreaming. Like I felt like this was my reality now. Like I was just, this is it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm awake and this is just life. I don't know what happened, but I'm alone. So I went back inside because it was scary as hell outside. And I went back inside, I closed the door and I'm just like walking around the apartment in the dark and then all of a sudden I hear like this like whistling and I'm like in the like dining room area and I hear it like in the living room which is not super far but it's like pitch black in the living room so I'm just kind of staring over there and I hear like whistling in like a certain like tune I don't remember how it went but I got like super scared because I was like, someone's standing over there oh, and they're whistling <laughs> and it's super creepy and all I see is darkness and there's no one here to help me and I don't know what to do. You were in the upside down. Yeah, that's what it felt like. It's so weird. So with not with monsters, but with whistling men. <laughs> yeah. So then it's getting closer. Like I hear the whistling like getting closer to me, but I can't see where they're at, you know? Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, oh my gosh. So I run into my room, I close the door and I just like run into my bed. And I like, I think at this point I was like, I need, I think I'm dreaming. Like this can't be like real life, you know? So I need to somehow go back to sleep and like wake up in the real world. Cause this is fucking creepy. So this, you knew you were dreaming or you had the idea? You were dreaming? I just felt like I need to like go back in bed and like try to like wake up so you kind of knew you were dreaming i think so Hmm. or maybe i just like didn't like i just didn't i wanted there to be like some sort of way out of this you know right right so i remember getting back in bed closed my eyes and i was just like laying under the covers and i would like every like few seconds or so i would open my eyes and like take down the blanket and i was still there like in the dark Mm -hmm. (sighs) and i was like I was just panicking at this point because I was like, I'm going to like literally be stuck here. Anyways, so then finally I close my eyes and I like lay there for a while. And then finally I wake up like in real life. Yeah. And I think this is one of the very like few times where I wake up and I'm actually like startled and my heart's beating fast. And like, I don't know, it was just like so like weird and scary. And then I also had it happen to me again when I moved out for the first first time i think yeah when i moved out for the first time into the first apartment it happened to me again was it as scary was it the same like you were still still afraid? um it was kind of the same where like i woke up and i was in my apartment and the layout was the same but everything was dark and i remember hearing the whistling guy again oh, and wow. i ran into the bathroom 
and I closed the door and I remember hearing him outside of the door and I was like fuck I don't know what to do I have to find a way back to my bed and like try to wake up again and then I remember like waking up from that dream again but it's just that's, weird and that's hella like it's kind of cool it's like it's almost like Freddy Krueger right like mm-hmm. when you, you that's go to sleep like and what it like, felt like you like are in like the basement and like there's whatever there's like some fire yeah. or something and then like he's like chasing you mm-hmm. but you never saw anybody right mm, no I don't think so Unless I saw, like, the outline of something, but I don't remember. Like, it was just dark, and I just remember, like, hearing that there was someone there. And it was very, like, it was really scary because, I don't know, just the feeling that I got, it didn't feel like something, like, it felt like the devil or something, honestly. <laughs> that, that's what I pictured. But, um, yeah, it was just weird that it, those are the only two times that I've dreamt something like that. And well, where that's, I hear the same, like, That's whistling. definitely, like, a lucid dream you right. think yeah like you you could have you could have done whatever you wanted or i mean you knew that you were just dreaming and mm-hmm. then you were like running around and you were in your like literally the yeah, same yeah, room you're right. that's a lucid dream yeah I, I don't know if it was like a fun one because like, i don't know people like can like know they're dreaming they're like yeah. oh let me go fly around yeah like usually when i lucid dream it's not like like n- nothing looks that realistic or like i'm not usually like in the same place where i fell asleep at yeah it's usually like I'm dreaming something crazy and then I'm like, oh, I'm dreaming. So let me steal this purse or yeah. drive this car. I don't know. That's sick. People can do that. That's pretty yeah. sick. But anyways, that's just like something weird. That's always like, like I always remember and think about that. Hopefully mm. it never happens again, but. No, it should happen again. Maybe next then... time the guy will actually get me yeah, and, and then... I won't be able to get out. That's not, <laughs> <laughs> that's not something I want to happen. That would be crazy. Right. Anyways. Dreams are crazy, guys. Uh, leave your interesting dreams in the comments below if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, if you're just listening, uh, you can uh, message me about your dreams. Actually, don't. Message Melissa about your dreams. Okay, thanks. Love love that. <laughs> Definitely want to read about your dreams. All right. Anyways, that's going to uh, end the podcast. I know it ran a little bit long first episode. We might. Well, it's a learning curve. I think people like long episodes, though. Uh, an hour and 10 minutes or an hour and 20 minutes i listen to podcasts that are like two hours long and i love it like an hour and 30 is like i think that's good okay well (laughs) that's a little bit long but we'll we'll see how what you guys like in the future yeah let us know what you guys want like shorter shorter ones shorter like closer to an hour or closer to like two hours Mm -hmm. anyways (laughs) thank you guys uh so much for listening to the podcast um the black sheep podcast Thank you for watching, if you are watching us on our YouTube channel. And thank you for listening, if you listen to uh, an audio version, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts, we'll definitely be on there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, next episode coming out on Saturday. And if not, watch us on YouTube on the following Friday. But yeah, Saturday will definitely be a new episode. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.